This is the GTN Show, welcome. Now today we are actually going to be taking a mini step back because you might remember earlier in the year we made some bold predictions. Well, two of those have just been realized, but then we're going to counter that with a leap forwards, looking at a potential very exciting new marathon record. Yeah, and racing has been happening all around the world, including the return to winning ways of Jan Frodeno. We're also gonna have our usual photos that you send in to us. We're gonna discuss some new race locations that have been announced, and we're also gonna be giving away some very cool pieces of kit to two lucky viewers. So it is another milestone. Oh, yeah. We have reached 200,000 subscribers here at GTN, and that is all in large part thanks to you guys. Yeah, we are super excited to get to that milestone, and it's another tick of our 2019 predictions list, because we thought we were going to get there, maybe not quite this soon, but we love the support that we get from you, so make sure you carry on liking our videos, sharing them, commenting, letting us know what you want as well, and also sharing your own photos with us, because we love to know what you guys get up to too. So talking of milestones and records, the sub to our marathon is back on our radars with Elad Kiptrige once again attempting to go sub two hours like he did two years ago, but this time in support with Ineos in the Ineos 159 challenge. Yeah, you see what they've done there. They've changed it from the breaking two that he had with Nike to 159. Now, Elad Kiptrige really believes he can do it. We've seen him, well, he's the current world record holder for the marathon, a 201.39, which he did in Berlin back in 20, no, last year for mm -hmm. that. And then yeah. it was two years ago that with that, um, breaking two, he actually got so close, 25 seconds over. And he said, he's actually been quoted to say, I learned a lot from my previous attempt and I truly believe that I can go 26 seconds faster than I did in Monza two years ago. And he says, to get another chance to break that magical two hour barrier is incredibly exciting. And I say that no human is limited and I know that it is possible for me to break this barrier. Strong words. Yeah, it is, it's really interesting because he has just done the London Marathon, which he won in time of two hours and two, which is an incredibly fast time again. So the likelihood is that he's going to be doing this in round about September, October. A date hasn't been firmly announced for this yet, but I do think he's going to need a little bit of rest before he gets ready to run 1 hours 59 or attempt to run 1 hours 59. Yeah, but it's that talking about that mental game of, you know, you don't think a barrier is possible and you know, 10 years ago we'd never believe anyone would even talk about going sub 2. But then if re you rewind, it was about, I think a few days ago, 65 years ago, that Roger Bannister broke that 4 minute mile. And once he broke it, loads of athletes kept started going under. So It'll be interesting to see when this, when this, if this gets broken, will we see lots of runners following suit? Yeah, and if the floodgates truly get um, broken wide open, perhaps. And, and you know, even talking about things we wouldn't have thought were possible, we would never have thought sub eight in Kona was going to be possible until last year. And it didn't just get beaten; it got absolutely smashed. So who knows if that's going to become more of a regular occurrence on the Big Island going forwards too? Yeah, well, there were loads of other records within that. There mm -hmm. was a bike course record. There was lots of age group records. So just show how you know conditions play a big part, but also you know sports science is changing all the time. Technology, the shoes that these runners are wearing are supposed to be having an effect as well. And you know, where, where, where does it end here? And it's interesting, you're know, looking at all of these um, barriers that are getting broken now. So have a bit of a rewind. And I want to know what you think has been the most significant sporting record that's ever been broken. Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. But now I think we're just gonna bring it back to marathon running for this week's GTM poll. Because we want to know if you think that in this year, in 2019, we are going to see that two hour record broken in the marathon. Yeah, and that's a simple um, yes, no answer we want from you. And just find the link above Heather's head there and click on that to give your answer. Um, and that then takes us on to the answers from last week's poll. When we asked you, which is the best sport to be strong in for triathlon? And it was an interesting mix. I know we were biased. I definitely voted for swimming just because I am strong at swimming. Did, what did you vote for? Yeah, I mean, yeah, swimming was my background too. I wasn't quite as good as Heather was, but I did like to swim as a kid. So yeah, definitely swimming for me. Well, you guys didn't quite agree with us because the results are in. 19% of you said swimming, 37% went for cycling, and then 44%, which has surprised me, went for running. So running wins in, in, your, in your minds. Yeah, but we actually had some quite interesting comments. Well, I thought they were certainly pretty interesting. So we had one from Dan Moore 
Morgan who said, well, if you're doing a half Ironman or an Ironman, then the bike, yeah. otherwise the run. So I see what he's saying there. Short course, perhaps the run is more of an impact and the longer you go, the, yeah. the cycle. I definitely discovered that when I did my first Ironman and bike <laughs> yeah. being my weakest, it was a bit depressing. Um, we've a got, lot, it's a long way, isn't Yeah, it? bike and, and dog trips says, personally, I would suggest that a running background would give you the best advantage due to being an impact discipline. So he's looking at more of the effects on your body. So if you've already built muscle and bone density from years of pounding the streets and track injuries less likely, which is a different way of looking at it, but a very valid point. Yeah, it is. And then and then another comment here from um, Overinvested who says, it will be different for pros and amateurs alike, which is a good point. Pros um, show you need to be fast in two of the three elements, doesn't really matter in his opinion, but for the older, more than 40 years, as he says, amateurs, it looks like cycling seems to be the one to be better at. So yeah, yeah interesting. But more, well, my favorite, I just got to add this comment, sorry Fraser, from Zach Martinez, because this is a real mind game of triathlon. He says, I think everyone thinks the advantage comes from their own personal weakness. I used to think it was the bike, but recently I've converted to running. And I think anyone who struggles on a swim says swimming's the most important. I think the bike's the most important because it's my weakness. So yeah, it I kind of, run, so. yeah, so maybe the jury's still out. Right, now for something very new and exciting from our friends at Polar because they have announced a new version of the Polar Vantage V and they've called it the Vantage V Titan because they've replaced the bezel and casing there with a titanium version, which is, well, rather cool. Yeah, on top of that, they've upped the strap a little bit. It's like this tartan material with a snazzy red bit on the inside. And it also comes in seven grams lighter than the original V. But other than that, internally, it's all still the same at the moment. There's going to be an update, I think, later on in the year. Now, this is pretty exciting but if you think this is exciting then hang on a moment because we have some very exciting news we've got two of these to give away all you need to do is look in the description below click on the link and follow the description there for your chance to win one of these Right, now on to our try news, and we're gonna start by having a quick look at some pieces of tech that have caught our eye. And first up is IQ2 Power Pedals, which is actually something that they hadn't initially planned to design. They were initially looking at power spacers that were gonna sit between the pedal and the crank, but they ran into all sorts of difficulties trying to work out how to create that technology. So now they've opted to offer a road pedal and a mountain pedal to their potential customers. Yeah, they're actually saying they're gonna keep it at the same price point that they were initially doing with these spacers, although they've kind of got go back to the drawing board because it's a completely different concept. Obviously, it's going to be more accurate and we've seen lots of companies do it in the past, but they're currently saying on their website that the dual road pedal is going to be 299 euros and then the mountain bike dual pedal is going to be 329 euros. So pretty low price point there. It does, however, only custom, for, it's only made for Lukio road pedals and then the SPD mountain bike pedal. So it's limiting there. Yeah, so for the likes of, say, speed play users, of which there are an awful lot out there, unfortunately, this isn't going to be possible for them to use at the moment. But nonetheless, it's a really good project and um, apparently it's gonna be available, well, hopefully by next year. Yeah, exciting stuff. Well, in other tech news, we've got some news from Look. They have just announced a new aero bar, the Air Go. Yeah, so essentially this has had a whole ton of wind tunnel and CFD testing. Um, Look have worked in sync with the French national track team and some, uh, well, multiple professional Ironman athletes actually to try and design what they say is essentially cutting edge design handlebar that we're actually seeing a lot more athletes spend time looking into, spending time to buying and, and molding their own handlebars, which is certainly something that a lot of aerodynamic gains can be made in, isn't it? Yeah, so it's, they've, their main aim was to make something that was more er ergonomic, and then as a result of that, it becomes more aerodynamic. So they by having the longer cups that come sort of further along your elbows, it, that makes it more aerodynamic, but also more comfortable, so you're more likely to be able to hold that position for longer. So, I mean, it looks, it looks comfortable. I've obviously not had a chance to try it out yet, but it looks like something you could be able to hold that position for a long time. Yeah, but as much as it looks comfortable, it definitely doesn't look like something that's particularly affordable, unfortunately. I mean, the price point for these is coming in at over a thousand pounds, isn't it? Which is a lot of money, but obviously there's an awful lot of technology gone into it. It can also be um, used as an upgrade onto an existing loop bike if you were gonna buy one of those, but it doesn't have to be a loop frame that you're putting these handlebars on. Um, they come in three different versions. There's a road version, TT, and a track version, isn't there? Yeah, and it's UCI legal initially, so that's great news, but if you do want to make it specific for triathlon, then at a little extra cost, you can actually have um, a mount for your water bottle and even for your bike computer added. 
So now on to some news about some race locations and very topically since we just had the Ironman 70.3 event this past weekend in St. George, Utah because that race venue has been announced as the venue for the 2021 Ironman 70.3 World Championships which is very exciting for that part of America because they haven't had the Worlds in that region since 2013 when they were last held in Las Vegas. Yeah, it's very exciting indeed. Well, St. George has been under the spotlight because they've also got an announcement that they're going to be part of this new hosting rotation for the full Ironman distance in North America. So St. George are actually going to host the full distance in 2020 and 2023. And it's actually going to rotate with two other cities. They haven't announced those two yet. So it's going to stay in the area, but sort of sharing the, the workload, but also you know sharing the participation. And I guess it's nice for people and they can find one that's closer to home and things for traveling. So I think it's a pretty good initiative. So essentially what Ironman are allowing athletes to do is race over a half distance or the full Ironman distance in the same location in alternate years which isn't something that's ever been possible before so just gives um, athletes the scope for a little bit of change in variety in the racing which I think is a really cool idea. Yeah, well, talking of racing opportunities in the US, there is another one that's about to happen. This is in the Attilo Racing, which is Swim Run. It's been a European, very much European-based event with the World Championships held in Sweden every year. And it's an event that you've got to do in pairs when you're basically running and swimming continuously several times over. And it's pretty tough, as we know. We've all dabbled our toes in a little bit here. But excitingly, it looks like it could be coming to the USA because the island, Catalina Island, which is just off LA, has had um, some talks and apparently there's been an agreement to actually be able to host an Attila race from next year. Yeah, now there are actually some sister events or merit events as they call them around the world and there are some already in America on the East Coast but this would be the first time it would be a full-blown Otilo event providing qualification into that world championship in Sweden each year which is exciting and it's a really interesting thing for that area of the US to have and in particular that island community really seem keen to have it, don't they? Yeah, well I think you know, they have a, a very sort of strong conservation society there that um, with tourism, they're always sort of fighting to make sure that the island is kept pristine and clean. And it's something that Attila are really passionate about as well. So I think it's kind of a, a good gel. And apparently as of February next year, you know, that relationship will be going forwards and we look forward to finding out when the race is. So now time for our race news and first up is Ironman Australia for Port Macquarie. Now in the men's race, it was a leading group of seven who exited the water together, but Cameron Worth was not amongst them. Indeed, he had a four and a half minute deficit to overcome. And yet by 60K into the bike, he had caught the leading group. And in fact, by 90K, the midway point of the ride, he was sole leader with a two minute gap. Now the Kona bike course record only served to extend this even further by the time he hit T2, he had a whopping eight and a half minute buffer to his nearest rivals. Now, he is normally not noted as the best of runners, Cameron Worth, but he has absolutely changed his ability on two feet. And he put together one of the quickest marathons of the day, added to his incredible bike ride. He broke the course record at Ironman Australia, coming home in an incredible eight hours and six seconds and 18 minutes. Now, the fight for the final two podium positions was down to four athletes. A New Zealand athlete, Mark Bosted, an Australian duo of Clayton Fattel and Tim Reid, plus the French athlete Dennis Chevreau. And it was indeed Chevreau who ran through to take third place. Former World 70.3 champion Tim Reid took a very well-deserved silver, and the winner was Cameron Worth from Australia. Now onto the women's racing, and this was essentially a three-way affair from the get-go, with American Kelsey Withrow and Swiss athlete Carolyn Steffen exiting the water some six minutes in advance of Laura Sedal and two-time defending Australian Ironman champion from the UK. Now, Steffen actually extended her lead out to some eight minutes by the midway point of the ride, but in the second half, Laura Sedal slowly clawed that back and they actually entered T2 together. There was a foot race for most of the first half of the marathon, but by 21k there was a 90 second buffer for Laura Sedal which she slowly increased to the point that she took home the victory for the third year in succession. Early swim leader Kelsey Withrow took third place with the fastest marathon of the day. Carolyn Steffen held on for a second and Laura Sedal took that victory. We had the North American Ironman 70.3 champs in St. George, Utah this weekend. And in the women's race, there were five athletes hit T1 within 10 seconds of each other. But it was the formidable duo of Holly Lawrence from the UK and the defending champion Paula Finley from Canada who quickly established a gap and had two minutes within the first 10 miles of riding. This continued to set the tone for the remainder of the ride with Holly Lawrence pulling clear, creating a buffer of some three minutes to Paula Finley and a further chasing trio 
another three minutes in arrears. It was actually fellow Canadian Heather Wartell who ran through to secure that remaining bronze position. Paula Finley holding firm on her second place and Holly Lawrence reclaiming the North American title she last won in 2017. Now onto the men's side of racing. There was an American athlete, Rudy Von Berg, who already had the Latin American 70.3 championships and the European equivalent to his name from 2018. So he very much had the US title in his sights and his race got off to a flying start by exiting the water in second place just behind fellow American athlete Eric Lagerstrom. And indeed by 10 miles into the race they had some 60 or 70 seconds clear of the rest of the field. And there were some heavy chasers following suit with the likes of German Uber biker Sebastian Keenley and American Ben Hoffman who has also won on the St George course before giving chase. Now unfortunately Keenley's charge to the front came to an end soon after as he received a five minute drafting penalty which put paid to any chance of the victory he had. And indeed by T2 Von Berg had an, a well, substantial lead over a loose group of six athletes and despite some very fast running from some of those athletes, Von Berg wasn't to be caught. Indeed, it was Canadian athlete Jackson Laundry who ran through with the fastest run split to take third place. Kona second place finisher from 2018, Bart Ehrenhutz, producing a very fine performance in his return to racing since Kona, securing second place, and Rudy Von Berg secured that trio of the championships with his victory. Now, as part of the ITU Festival of Multisport being held in Pontevedra, Spain, we had the World Long Course Championships being held this weekend. Now, given that Pontevedra is Javier Gomez's hometown, there never really was any doubt who the favourite for the race was, where he was aiming to add to his existing 10 World Championship titles that he has across all disciplines of the sport. And indeed, it was Gomez who led out of the water, despite the fact that due to cold water and air temperatures, they had to reduce the distance by half from 3K down to 1500 meters and he led out a group of some 15 men onto the rolling 113k bike ride and by the end of that there was a group of about eight who had formed including the likes of defending champion from Spain Pablo de Pina we also had New Zealand's Terenzo Bazzoni in there too and indeed, despite the quality of runners that were hitting T2 together, it was Gomez who used that home crowd to essentially spur him on and he built an insurmountable lead of nearly six minutes over his closest chaser, which was the defending champion Pablo de Pina from Spain. And in third place, we had Jaroslav Kovacic from Slovakia. So on the women's side of things, we had the Danish athlete Camilla Pedersen, who actually won this long course title in 2014, leading the athletes out of the water. And very soon after, in the early stages of the bike, she was joined by the Swiss athlete Emma Billum, who unfortunately then was forced to stop soon after with a mechanical issue. But the French athlete Manon Genet actually rode up and joined the Dane as they hit T2 together. But soon after starting the run, it was the Belgian athlete Alexander Tondur, who is the reigning European long course champion, who used a very quick run speed to assume the leading position. And a duo of Spanish athletes were running not far behind to secure the other podium positions using a very formidable home crowd support. And that was Anna Nogueira running through into third and Judith Corcan taking second with Alexander Tondur adding that world crown to her existing European title. Now as part of the ITU Multisport Festival we also had the ITU Cross World Championships over a 1k swim, 30k mountain bike and 7k trail run format. And in the men's racing we had third place going to Lucas Koser from the Czech Republic. Second place was defending champion from Spain Ruben Ruzafa but the win went to Arthur Frissier from France who took his maiden victory at this level of racing. In the women's side of things we had Nicole Walters from the UK taking third place, her countrywoman Jackie Slack taking second place and the win also her maiden victory at this level was Eleonora Perusini from Italy. Now one final little bit of interest, a race that happened in Germany over the weekend. One of the oldest races in Germany in fact is the Buschutten race over at the Olympic distance. It's actually held in a swimming pool, a 1k swim, 40k bike and a 10k run. But the interest this weekend was it was the return of racing of Jan Frodeno after his long injury layoff. Now thankfully Jan Frodeno went on to have a gun to tape victory and he became the affectionately termed King of Buschutten. And on the women's side of things we had Laura Phillip backing up an extremely excellent result from her win in 70.3 Marbella last weekend becoming the Queen of Buschutten too. Right, it's that time of the show where we get to share some of the brilliant photos you guys have sent in. We've chosen four this week, and to start us off, we've got this great one from Joseph of his Cannondale Slice. And I thought the backdrop looked familiar, then we looked a little bit closer and realised it's actually from Oceanside. 
Yeah, so unfortunately it's a little while since we, well it feels like a little while since we were there in the sunshine. And uh, it does appear that Joseph raced because his race number is there on the seat tube, so that's good news. Hope you had a good race, Joseph. His Canada slice is kitted out with an uh, Altegra group set. He's got some very nice fulcrum wheels there. He's got an 80 mil deep and a 40 mil front, so hope you went pretty quick on race day. Yeah, and a lot of storage options. I think you're ready to do an Ironman with that lot. <laughs> yeah, there is quite a lot there. Um, now that leads us on to the next photo, which is of a lovely Ridley Dean being ridden round the velodrome in Belgium, isn't it? Yeah, it's the... in Bruges. So this one was sent in from Steve, and he says, testing on the bike at the Patrick Circuit Velodrome in Bruges. I got um, the bike for a good price and got some decent wheels for it. Now it's about getting used to the bike in the position, saying Velodrome is a great place to build that endurance and no need to stop or break or anything. So yeah, if you've got that on your doorstep, it's a great place to go and train. Yeah, I've, I've never ridden an outdoor Velodrome, have you? No, just no. an indoor one, but an old track bike, definitely not on a TT bike. So. Yeah, so definitely that's an interesting one. Thanks for sending that one in. And a uh, rather different change of tack now, actually actually is um, a hack, I suppose we'd call this, isn't it? And this is from Graham Baxter, and I know you quite well, Graham, so I'm impressed with this one. He um, <laughs> forgot his race belt at the I2 Cross Worlds last week, and he's amended or adapted using his polar heart race. Yeah, when I first started looking at it, I was like, all it, I just thought it was a, a race belt that he'd use pins instead of the body bits, and I was like, that doesn't look like much of a hack, and then I saw the, the heart rate piece. So, I mean, the only problem is you're obviously not really going to get a very accurate heart rate if it's down around your waist, or your race number's going to be like up here. But, Maybe it could be. But he does tell us it recorded his pulse on. <laughs> I'm not sure if he's just kidding on, but he's, oh, he's got a strong, like, yeah, a strong <laughs> yeah. vein or artery or something. Possibly. <laughs> anyway. um, moving on. Um, we have um, another photo from Queensland, Australia, that comes in from Hans, and it's his Quintana Roo Kilo. And he says that since he's had to do it in the evening to beat the dreaded mosquitoes in the evening time, he's had to light some nice candles. So it does look very romantic. Now, that leads us nicely on to the caption competition for this week. Um, the photo was of Alistair Brownlee on the podium last week in 70.3 Marbella. And we've had a few uh, very good captions sent in. Firstly, we had one from Tim Ford, who said, ever had that feeling that they put too many electrolyte tabs in the drink bottles? Yeah, there was a little bit of fizzing, as you'd mm -hmm. expect. Um, Orzen Galovic, another runner-up, comes up with bike draft while raining explained in one picture. Well, I think that's from Andy Dreitz's reaction there. Definitely, if you go along to your local club without a mud guard on in the winter, you'd get that expression, Yeah, I think. it's true, actually, yes. Um, and Bike and Dog Trips says, another corker of a win for Alistair, which, which we like, but Alistair didn't actually win. Yeah, I find that one actually a little bit more entertaining <laughs> As a result, but um, our favourite this week and the winner of this GTN swim cap goes to Y9 Anik with when your uncle. <laughs> Sorry, I'm already laughing. When your uncle with uh, only three days starts talking, basically the champagne oh. is not coming from the champagne bottle. I had to explain that one to Fraser. And she did explain it very well, so I'm glad they had <laughs> a little, it. There was a little bit more saliva than that, you're lucky there. But anyway, that leads us on to this week's picture for our caption comp. For your chance to win one of these caps, you need to come up with a caption suggestion for this. And this picture is from the Ironman Africa Championships in Port Elizabeth, South Africa. And it is of the South African pro athlete Anna Watkinson relaxing after a pre-race swim. I very kindly had this image sent in by Chris. Now I must admit the first time I saw this picture it did give me a little bit of the creeps with this floating head on pool deck but yeah, I, think I think it's brilliant, I love it. it. I mean it is, it's very cleverly done but it still gave me a little bit of a creep. Um, I mean my mum always used to tell me if my head wasn't screwed on I'd always lose it but... Oh, we're lucky it is screwed on yeah. aren't we Fraser? Well I think she needs to get her head in the game pre-race but you guys I'm sure could do way better than us so for your chance to win one of these GTN caps just let us know your caption suggestions in the comments section below. Yeah and that brings to a conclusion our show for this week so hopefully you've enjoyed it please hit that thumb up like button find the globe on screen click that and get all the other content on the channel and if you've liked the t-shirts or the Heather's hoodie for example or perhaps one of these caps again. Yeah you can buy them if you're not if, or if your captions are even worse than Fraser and Arsing, you can just go and buy one it's far easier. Yeah just find the link to the shop to do that and see all the other stuff that's in there on the GTN shop. Um, if you want to see a video that we did with the pros about asking how far they've gone or how fast they've ridden, you can find that here. And if you're anything like me and you like to eat throughout the day, I've made a video specifically on nutrition on the go, and that's just down here. <laughs>